Welcome to The Goblet Wire, a surreal microfiction podcast. Transcripts are available on our website, thegobletwire.card.co. This is Episode 9, The Faded Starling, written by Eli Barraza. Afternoon light streams through your windows, bathing you in warmth. Your bed holds onto your heat, on the precipice of becoming uncomfortable. I get up and go to look in a mirror. No mirror adorns your room. Fine. I leave the room. The smell of old liquor spills and bar fights of the past waft up from the stairwell, but all is still quiet. I go down the stairs to the the bar. The place itself is clean enough, but has a stickiness that will never go away. Green glass panels filter the outside light to give it all a sickly pallor without the electric bulbs to combat it. A faded starling, your symbol, hangs on a tattered tapestry by the door. I head for the storage area. You find the door leading to the basement locked. Passcode? It it, it needs a goddamn passcode? A knock pounds from the other side of the door. From inside the basement? Yes. Okay. Uh, I freeze, listening intently. I don't want them to know that I'm here. The pounding fades. Replaced by scratching. The hell? More knocking. This time, from the front door. I don't answer it. You hear a voice calling your name, demanding to be let in. I know you're in there. They call. Fine, I open the door. A woman recoils from the door frame as she sees your face. She eyes you closely, then her hand rises slowly to touch your face, inspecting it. I lean away and turn around to go back inside. The woman follows, lurching into a seat. You... you were supposed to open 30 minutes ago. She rubs her hands, not daring to look you in the eye again. Okay, uh, I go to the other side of the bar, then ask what she wants. You don't have it ready for me? The woman appears stricken. You always have it ready. I tell her it's been a rough day. She lets out a nervous laugh. (sighs) Right, well, then she stares anywhere but at you. Okay, uh, what options are behind the bar? A wall of bottles face you, their contents ranging from amber to acid green to blood red. Which one is lowest on alcohol? There is no alcohol here anymore. Fine. Which one is lowest on liquid? On a middle shelf sits a bottle, low on its ruby contents. Uh, I pour her a glass of that? She takes the glass, unable to hold your gaze. Are... are you sure? She asks. Yes, I'm sure. Doesn't she have some place to be? She swirls the liquid and sips it tentatively. The front door swings open and a man enters, rolling his chair to the end of the bar. Do I know him? Yes. How, how do I know him? That memory has been erased. What? Fine. I walk over to the guy and ask what he wants. The man eyes you with more confidence than the other patron, but with the same air of suspicion. What have you done? Done to yourself. I tell him I don't know what he means, then ask what he wants. He takes out a locket, glancing at the basement door a beat, before handing it to you. I take it and open it. Please make a memory extraction check. Oh, okay. <clears throat> Six. Please make a memory extraction check. Oh. Uh, tails. You are standing in your bar, this man beside you, 
a figure covered in spines and spikes, dripping with poison, the protrusions flexing in reaction to the air escaping the basement. It has a crown of longer spikes circling its head, filaments hanging, drifting. It enters the basement and you make a circular gesture, then place a hand on the door. A flash of light and the lock sigil fades away. So that's how I did it. You turn around to see the man in the chair opening a locket. He hands it to you and you stare into it. You can feel the piece of you lost, only just now return. I ask him if he's here for that thing. Aye. I thank you for your discretion. Not like I had much choice. At your words, hammering emanates from the basement accompanied by splintering. A hand juts through and a high keening sound emanates from the other side. I ask the man what's going on. He replies, you said your ward could hold him until the trans- He's interrupted by a yell and a thump from the other side of the bar. What now? The woman fell off her stool, but not the woman. An image of the woman fell off of the stool. Her body is still on the stool, but it's as if someone wiped their hand through a chalk rendering. The image on the ground reaches for you, asking what you gave her. I ignore her. The creature seems more dangerous. I use a key to protect myself. You have no keys pertaining to self-protection. Fine, I shove a chair against the basement door. You do so. The man backs away from you, staring. I tell him to help me. I should have known, he whispers, still staring. I should have realized that you were... Wrong. Get him to stop staring at me. What will you do to make him stop? I yell at him to stop. The man shakes his head and speaks, moving away. What are you? A shriek pierces the air from within the basement. Okay, you know what? I run towards the bar door to get outside. You pass the woman and her image on the ground. Both of them ask, What have you done with the healer? Just just get me out of here, all right? You open the door. But you cannot escape their knowing. This episode was written by Eli Barraza. It starred an unknown figure as the driver, Raul Vega as Tyler, and Richard Penner as the dictator. Art by Chandler Candela. Credit music by Oliver Morris. Editing and sound design by Esther Ellis and Justin Hellstrom. Synthscape by Justin Hellstrom. We were featured in the Apollo Podcast app newsletter. The legendary Will Williams wrote a review titled Drinking Static from the Goblet Wire. It is a beautiful and insightful read. I'll link it in the show description. The Apollo Podcast app is free to download and is full of curated lists of the best fiction podcasts out there, including a custom carousel featuring all of our creators. Check it out. There's something special coming next month. There are nine days left in the Indiegogo campaign for The Far Meridian, created by this episode's writer, Eli. She hit $8,500 of her $11,000 goal, and you can join over 175 backers in bringing this final season to life, all while getting perks and crafts as a thank you. The Goblet Wire would not exist without shows like The Far Meridian. Go show them your support, and listen if you haven't. We have a three-part series in the works to close out this batch of episodes. We won't know the release date until Justin gets back from his canoeing trip, but I can tell you they were written by Tozaman, creator of Caravan, and star the one and only David Alt. 
keep an eye out for an announcement, and in the meantime, protect your passphrase.